Well, hey, it's Lynn Brown. Welcome to the Gritty Women Global Podcast, episode number 128. Now I'm a results coach. But prior to that, I spent the first half of my life in the comparison trap. It was more like living in a mental prison. And then, y'all, in my spare time, I was a world-class people pleaser. And trust me, I don't recommend that for anyone. And then one day, I just I just got tired of having to start over and over and over again. So I, I quit quitting. I mean, that sounds kind of silly, but I actually quit quitting on my life, on my dreams. Now, why that took me the first half of my life to figure it out, you know what? We'll never know that. And it doesn't even matter. What matters is that I became aware that I wanted a different result. But it was it was so wild because that day things began to change for me. I mean, it it was crazy. But like when I changed the way that I was looking at things, the things around me began to change. You can imagine how shocked I was when I realized that um, my circumstances really were not driving my results. Because now I'm just being transparent, but I really thought that it was just the way it was. My life was, it, it was what it was. I mean, it was going to just be that way. Like I was just going to kind of drift on through life and, and just slide in safely at the end. And so I always thought my circumstances were driving my results. And, and I didn't really know until I began this, this whole personal growth journey. And I, and I had a coach that helped me see that my belief was driving my thoughts and my actions. I mean, I could never figure out why I felt like I was always coming in second. And I just thought, well, you're just going to be the second place girl. You know, <laughs> I felt broken. And and I just felt like that somehow I just had missed out. I believed I was not smart enough, skinny enough, popular enough, athletic enough. I just wasn't enough in any category. I just always came up short, came up second. I was convinced that surely <laughs> the day that God was just passing out all the talents and, and all the goodness that he gives to all of us, that somehow maybe I had gone out to play or something. I was at recess or he skipped over me or I don't know. And so let me ask, does anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Have, have any of you ever struggled with just self-confidence and just truly believing in the value that you bring to the world? So today I thought that we would just chit chat about that. I just I just think that we just need to kind of slow down a minute and just lean into this this idea of confidence because it's so funny, you know, I can remember growing up and in in college and even after that even in my adult life just saying, "Oh wow, they're so super confident." And oftentimes it's it's not really that these people that are doing these amazing things that they're just overloaded with confidence. Cause I, I promise you, if they're honest, they have scary thoughts and they have throw up moments and they have moments when they jump in and go, why am I doing this? What in the world? I'm in the middle of a project right now. It's like I jumped and I said, yes. And then there've been a, a couple of days I've thought, Lynn Brown, what in the world were you thinking? You know? And, and then of course there's always people that say, how are you going to do it? And then you're like, Oh, don't you worry. It's, I mean, but I'm at that place in my life now that I truly know that the thoughts and ideas that I have, they don't just come from outer space. They don't just come out of a, you know, ping, just out of, out of the blue sky. They come from my creator and I was designed and destined for more. And I know, trust me on this now, I don't, I'm not trying to be ugly here, but there are a lot of churchy people that think, oh, well, you should just be happy with what you have. And y'all, I am, I am, I've been practicing gratitude for seven years and I am so grateful for just breathing and waking up and my beautiful family and my home and my dog and the messy house, you know, with Legos everywhere from my little precious grandson. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for all that, but that I don't need to just be okay with that because we were designed and created to be all that God made for us. He said himself that we will do more. We will do extraordinary things, more and greater things than even he did himself. So I'm just, I'm there. I'm in that place. But think about it. How, how do we get to the, 
place of whether it's lack of confidence and we are aware of that or where do we get and how do we get to that place of confidence? Why is it that some people just seem to manufacture it and others str struggle to scrape it up? I mean, some people have a hard time just walking into a crowded restaurant. Some people have a hard time just talking to somebody on the telephone. Some some people just ponder and think about making a post. What if somebody thinks it's this? Or what if somebody thinks it's that? Or what if I misspell a word? Trust me, you'll be fine. I misspell words all the time. And sometimes spell check can't even help me. So how, how do we get this confidence, this God-sized confidence, this gritty confidence that allows us just to wake up with our cape on, we hit the floor, and we're ready. We're ready to go. How do we grow it? How do we keep it? I don't know about y'all, but I spent so much of my life waiting to feel confident. Like I was going to, I was getting ready to get ready. So I would wait until I felt like doing the thing before I did the thing. I thought, I thought I would get the feeling of, okay, Lynn, this is the day, girl, go get them. Well, I hate to tell y'all, that's a pipe dream. It's like, it, it's worse like that. It's just like being in that just trap of, here's a good example. Remember, remember the summers when you were little going to the pool and you would be on the end of the diving board? And like you would want to jump off the big diving board and your toes would be over the edge and you would kind of bend your knees and you'd put your arms back and your parents or whoever was helping you was out in the pool going, you can do it. Come on, jump to me. I'm right here. Trust me. You can jump. And then, and then you would just get all ready and, and, and you would inch toward it and then you would back away. How many times in your life and I can tell you for mine for sure, have you backed away? Have you backed away from picking up the call and calling the person that's on your mind? Are you backed away from, you know, whatever the thing was that you knew that you were supposed to do? How many times? I've, I can't even count the times I've done it. Like, <laughs> this was always one of my big ones. I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to get my kitchen organized. And you know how you get all those, those glass containers in your fridge like you see on you know, Pinterest and all that, and they have them all stacked and they're all chopped up veggies and all that. And I would say, I'm going to get organized. I'm going to get my kitchen organized. Then I'll eat healthy. Or I'm going to start writing the book when, you know, I clean off my desk or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. You know, I'm going to call them when things settle down or I'm not going to bother them now because what if, what if they're, you know, too upset for me to call them? But all the while, these distractions, and that's what they are, y'all. They're nothing more than distractions. They hijack progress in the area of confidence. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have allowed just busyness to rob me of my dreams, to rob me of progress. And honestly, here's the truth. I mean, and again, I'm not proud, but I'm just, I'm just that kind of, I'm just there now in my life where I'm going to be honest with y'all, but it was just... I was stuck back in status quo doing the things I was comfortable doing. I'm not saying that they were all mindless. I mean, it's not like I was just, you know, binging on Netflix. It's not like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying that. But I was just, I chose the safe zone. My go-to strategy or my, my coping skills were to ignore those thoughts when when the thoughts would come in and 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 I would know I was supposed to be doing one thing and I would do another, I just ignored them. I glossed them over with a joke or, you know, I just would put on a big fake smile and, you know, I just and that was long before, you know, I wore a mask, long before it was, you know, something that we had to do for a minute. But anyway, I would act like I was the most confident person ever. But inside I was far from that. And that noise, it, it didn't go away. That that constant chatter, you know what I'm talking about, that little voice in your head. <laughs> that I can remember when we were young, we'd say, you know, oh, we, if we got in trouble, the devil made me do it. You know, well, that's just an excuse. But it's it's really, there's this voice, and we all have one. And, and you know, you can name it if you want to. Um, but we have those, you know, when we're in the middle of something, all of a sudden this voice comes out of nowhere to try to hijack you know, hijack your progress or to keep you held back. And 
and I would just ignore it. I never dealt with that voice. I just believed I was the way I was and my life was the way it was and that was just going to be it. And I'm a person of faith, raised in a church, went to church Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday night, you know, I mean, raised in church, still in church, but I never really believed the truth about what I heard in church, about the the truth about who it, the word said that I was during, during middle school, you know, I began numbing the pain with alcohol an attempt to fit in, an attempt to win friends, an attempt to get attention, regardless of who it was. And unfortunately, you know, my body grew up a lot faster than my my brain, my mind. And I thought that getting attention and validation from males was okay. I had no idea that some of them were so corrupt. They were they were so corrupt. But they were they were not um, out for good for me for sure. They were seeking, you know, just their own needs. But I was so starved for that, and my confidence, self confidence, was so low. And God loved the well meaning little old lady from church. I'll never forget. She wrote me a letter, and she was telling me how precious I was, and and God loved her. It was really sweet. But and it, it was so kind of her. But I didn't feel precious. I felt broken. So me hearing those words, you're so precious, that that was like you might as well have been telling me, go jump in a lake, because I didn't believe it. So it takes more than, than you know, a cute quote and, and somebody just telling you that. We, we have to be able to dig down and, and really look at the, the beliefs that we have and, the, and the, false, the false messages, those paradigms that have played over and over in our brain that keep us stuck. I didn't feel precious. I felt like, you know, I had zero self-confidence. You know, Hebrews 10.35 is one of my favorite verses, and it's one that I've prayed over my kids forever. It says, cast not away your confidence because great is your reward. I mean, I couldn't wrap my mind around that because I had no confidence. So I thought, well, I guess I'll never have a reward. I didn't fit in. But I did everything to fit in. I did everything to feel like I belonged. And y'all, the harder I tried, the farther I got. (laughs) <laughs> from the truth of who I was. And there were some dark times for me. And it wasn't truly, it wasn't truly until I began to do this work and this personal growth journey that my mindset changed. And truly my mind was transformed and renewed. So that's why everything I do now <laughs> is based on Romans twelve two. It truly is. Because I know, even even, and it doesn't matter how old you are, I know that right now we can transform, be transformed by the renewing of our minds, regardless of the age, regardless of the age. The good news is that we can create new thoughts and we can create new habits and new ways of thinking. And I'm not going to tell you that it will be an overnight thing because it's going to take some work. And and some people would rather just get another potato chip or get another chocolate chip cookie or buy another purse or go on another trip or gloss it over and pretend it's not real rather than do the work. But I'm telling you, and it doesn't have to take a lifetime, <laughs> but you will see such big returns on your investment and your work if you will do the work. I just want to tell everybody, just do the work. If, if if we would all just do the work and love ourselves, we would be able to love other people and the world would just be such a, an amazing place. <laughs> but you're so worth it. You're so worth it. And I want to give you one of my winning tips. I call it my 10 winning tips because it truly helped me with win the war in my mind. Talk about a battle in my mind. I mean, it was like every day. It was just this camo camo crowd coming after me every day. So I want, you, I want you to know this, that gritty truly is the new strong. And that G is is for a grateful heart. It starts with gratitude. The R is, is that we have to be resilient. We are resilient. I guarantee you, if we had time to talk, you could tell me at times that you did hard things. You've done hard before. You can do it again. I is to to live an inspired life where you wake up and you want to get out of the bed and you want to run like your soul is on fire toward the dream and the passion that God has placed in your heart. The two T's and gritty are you got to think tough. Y'all, this life is not for wimps. 
being a woman, being a young girl these days, being a mama, being someone going through a divorce or someone about to be married or someone facing death or the loss of a spouse, it is not for wimps. But gritty, my friends, is the new strong. And as you become aware of your self-limiting beliefs, and you beware, you are more aware of where you are when they pop in, what triggers these thoughts, you're going to be able to annihilate them. You're going to be the great assassin on those thoughts. So don't be like me and just immediately try to change the channel, flip it, you know, get another song going. Another helpful thing is just to look at how you deal with, you know, uncomfortable situations or uncomfortable conversations. Do you pull back to safety? Do you find yourself avoiding the conflict? I'll tell you, I would always people please. <laughs> like to the degree that was so unhealthy. I never knew that my lack of self-confidence was driving that behavior either. I just wanted everybody happy. I thought that was a great trait. Oh, I just want everybody happy. Well, that just means that I'm just going to sacrifice who I am and, and what I really feel and believe because out of fear of letting you see the real me. It got me nowhere fast. But the great news, here we go. The great news is that we can change. I can change. You can change. And we can grow and become to, to be the, the best versions of ourselves, who God created us to be. So we can fulfill the greatest purpose, which is to reflect him to the world. I mean, isn't that why we're here? Seriously, is that not why we're here? We're to be salt and light. Salt makes things taste better. We're supposed to make the world taste better, be better. So go, go shine bright, gritty sisters. Until next week, remember, courage over comfort. Courage over comfort. Courage over comfort. You got this. Love y'all. Until next time, I'll see you then. Oh, and go check out my new website. It's www.lynnbrown. That's L-Y-N-N-E, brown.net. You can check out some of my um, coaching, some of my offerings, and, and my new product I'm super excited about called Spoken Over You. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.